Well, hello again. We had some pretty rough weather last night. Don't know if you can hear the siren going, but we are under a tornado warning. Well, hopefully it'll go quickly. They said it's moving fast. You know, it always has to happen at night. I don't understand it. Tornado came pretty darn close to the house, but I have that sign in the yard that says, you know, that round red circle, you know, with the X that says no tornadoes allowed, you know, tornado busters, that sort of thing. It's worked these many years. It never got near the house. I just went ahead and made the repairs to the back of the uh, pinball machine, our card whiz. You'll remember it had a, ba a bad set of uh, contacts here. Uh, these were not the right kind. These were not long enough and they were burnt and fried. Also, the, the uh, coil for the uh, solenoid. You'll check this out. I want you to see this baby. We'll just focus right in here on that. The coil for the solenoid was also fried to a crisp. We had one other set of contacts get burnt uh, off the same unit. And of course, the whole thing basically got pretty much fried, and you can see how dark and black it all the kind. Actually, these are probably still good, but you know, I figure, what the heck? Uh, if I have a replacement set, why not go ahead and install them? All I would have to do is really clean it all up and clean the contacts. But I'm not going to. I've already installed a replacement on the unit, and all I have to do is transfer the wires from here to here. All right, all done. Now, again, this is our bad coil. This was one set of contacts that had the uh, the tip burned off, the uh, the elongated tip right here is missing from right here. And this here, now I said that this would probably work if I cleaned it up and everything, and it probably uh, might not have been a big deal, but really it probably was. I mean, remember the old carbon trail trick? There was voltages running between these things. Uh, what we'll do, I think, I don't know if I'm going to keep these things or not. I'll probably just chunk them all. I don't need them. Let's, let's, I'll tell you what, let's power it on. Uh, plug it in, power it up, and see if it made any difference at all. Well, we're back here looking. Uh, this little Dumaflachi here also works off of a uh, solenoid over here. And you'll see that this thing goes around and around. And uh, there's a whole slew of contacts down in here. And this is kind of the brains of the outfit. And we'll be doing a lot of cleaning on that. We'll, we'll remove this and tip it down. We'll clean all the contacts and shine up all these. And I think there's some greasing that we can actually do on this. Put it all back together without having to tear it all to pieces, okay? So that'll be an upcoming uh, project. Uh, probably one whole video on that thing. I went ahead and manually set all the score wheels back to zero. And, uh, you know, Brendan said that might help also. So let's go ahead. We got her plugged in. Let's see if anything happens at all. Nope. The old motor just wants to keep turning and turning and turning. <laughs> all right. Let's shut her down. Let's see if the flippers work. Nope. Flippers don't work either. Okay, what that means is we're now, uh, what we're going to have to do is dig deeper down into it. So we'll lift this lid up and take a look at the motor running and see if there's any sparks, any, any you know, excessive sparks, any burn mark, anything obvious, you know. You know, there is a chance this thing could wind up, uh, lock this door locking up on me here. And I don't want to, I don't want to have to drill that lock out in case it does. So I'll just go ahead and see if I can't remove that. There we go. Save myself a little trouble later on. I don't need those kinds of headaches. By the way, it was pointed out in the last video by one of our uh, good subscribers that you don't always have to lean this thing all the way back the way I had pulled it forward and, you know, put the two ends down in the low spots on these two rails and then lean it all the way forward against the head. You can also use this rail here to lift it up and hold it, almost like the hood of a car. Well, that's what the old motor looks like going around and around. No sparks at least, no smoke. Uh, everything, see, I don't see anything that's obviously burned, fried, nothing, no black marks, anything. So 
Probably our biggest problem is going to be just contact cleaning. Absolute contact cleaning, especially over here in this. Look at that. We've got, uh, well, we got one set, two set, three set, four set, five sets of contacts just right there. And each one of them has got a couple of hundred on it. So we've probably only got about 50,000 sets of contacts that need to be cleaned. <laughs> you know, long term. Pro oh, I do see something that is. A oh, I do see something that's a little messed up. What is this? See these little plastic white things? Look at that one right there. It's a little out of whack. Look at that. I'll have to take a look at that. That may be part of our problem. Let me get down in here. Let me zoom in. Oh, yeah, that thing's all messed up. It's supposed to be lined up with the different uh, relay contacts, put in the different slots. That might be our problem. I'll start there first. Okay, folks, I see what's happening now. The question is... How do you get a whole bunch of contacts to operate off of a single uh, relay? Especially if some of the contacts have to be closed and some of them have to be open. And when you activate the relay, they have to change positions. How do you get them all to do that? Well, you, you take these little white plastic things here and you make the, the uh, tips of the uh, contacts really long, like you see right here, and you slip them down in these slots. And depending on where it sits in the slot, will determine whether or not the set of contacts is open or closed. And here's how she works. You know, if, if uh, you just take this little baby here and there, there's one relay back here. And when it's energized, it makes this thing go in and out. See it? And it causes the contacts to change depending on where that little tab on the end of the contact goes down through the uh, slot. Now you notice that this one is bent. This one is bent out. Now why is that? Let me show you. Why is that one bent out and not down in the slot? Well, that one is uh, is your last ball relay. Somebody wanted to keep playing without having the machine shut down after the third, fourth, or fifth ball. So basically what they did was pretty much set it up like a free play. <laughs> All right, now let's go down a little further. I found a couple of these things that had slipped out, either slipped out or been pulled out by someone who messed with them. Now this one right here had some problems. Uh, a couple of these things were up out of the slots. Let's see if she's working. Yeah, she's now working better. And which one did that turn out to be? The reset control relay. Mm -hmm. Keeping the machine from properly resetting. Now the chances are, even if I fire it up, which I'm going to now, I've got everything where it's supposed to be. I've got them all in the different slots where they're supposed to be. Some of them are a little bit crooked. I'm not too happy about this one right here. This seems to be bent. I'll look at that one a little bit more. But I want to fire it up just to see if it'll reset. Maybe not. Now, if it does not, then we'll go ahead and shut down and call an end to the uh, video. So let me work on it a little bit more. We'll be back. All right, at the very least, I've got it pretty much all straightened up now. We'll have to do a lot of contact cleaning. We'll have to do a lot of vacuuming. As you can see, there's been a lot of broken glass down in here. I don't know, maybe this thing wound up in a bar room also. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and fire it up. I got the light on here so you can, uh, let me see, let's stick the light over here somewhere where you can get an idea. Now, right now, I just want you to see this motor going around and around. That's probably all we're going to get. <laughs> wasn't making that buzzing noise before, how about that? I don't know what that is. I think it was that relay right there. First ball relay. Anyway, we'll go ahead and uh, knock this off here and see if I can't work on it just a little bit more. But anyway, that, that should titillate you a little bit, give you just wet your beak a little bit more on this uh, pinball machine. Until next time. This is John. Well, you know how it is. It's hard to pull away sometimes. I was just getting ready to close it up, and I said, nah, let me take a couple more seconds and just see if I can't mess with this. Uh, this start relay didn't look too kosher to me, the way all those contacts were slipped down in those slots. So I've got them straightened out now and where they're supposed to be, I think, you know, considering the fact I've never seen a set like that before, except in... Uh, I think in the jukebox there's a couple like that, but that's about it. <laughs>
So what I'm going to do is we'll go ahead and fire it up to see if there's any change at all. I'd like to I'd like to see something besides that buzzing. All right, one way or the other, uh, we're gonna go ahead and call it quits. So let's see what happens. Fire in the hole. No change. How about them apples, huh? <laughs> anyway, we'll see you next time.